God, for the prayer. We thank God for all the prayers. God will heal us, will heal our land. Um, for all the sins which we have done, God has touched us and we thank God for his blood. Uh, we continue in chapter 13, uh, 13 eight, sorry, is it 13, eight? no, it's chapter 39. Um, so we continue in our reading this morning, give ye them to eat. That's the title of the chapter. But before we continue, we'll sing him 359. 359. Can I have singers who can do number one? First stanza. Hug the voice of Jesus calling. We can do that. Thank you, sisters. Number two. I'll take verse. another one. Thank you, Brother Desire. The third verse. I'll do number three. Thank you, Sister Helen. The last one. Three fifty nine. I'll try this. Thank you, Sister Stolle. Yeah, we can start in that order. Hark the voice of Jesus calling Who will go and work today Fields are wide, the harvest waiting Who will bear the sheaves away Loud and long the master calleth Rich rewards he offers free who will answer gladly saying, Here am I, O Lord, send me. If you cannot cross the ocean, then the feet and lands explore. You can find the hidden era. You can help them at your door. If you cannot speak like angels, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all. If you cannot be the watchman standing on, on Zion's wall, pointing out the path to heaven, offering life and peace to all. With your prayers and with your bounties, you can do what heaven demands. You can be like faithful Aaron, Holding up the prophet's hand. Amen. While the souls of men are dying, and their master calls for you, let not hear you idly saying, This is nothing I can do. Gladly take the task he gives you. Let his work your pleasure be. Answer quickly when he calleth. Here am I, O Lord, sing thee. Amen, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all the people, all the beautiful singing and for just being with us, Lord, this morning, allowing us to come together once again and to learn of you. Father, we're asking for your Holy Spirit to be our guide as we uh, read the desires, the desire of pages, dear Father. May you be the one who guides us and who 
Help us to understand the lessons we are supposed to learn from these readings, Lord. May we not just uh, read and go away empty, but Lord, fill our hearts with this word and may we go and do what you ask of us. You require us to go and reach out someone each day, Lord. Give us the courage to stand and to bring someone to Christ. Help us to relive a life which reflects your character, which uh, witnesses are to others, Lord, so that more people can come to you. Thank you for each and everyone who's come this morning to hear from you, dear God. So I pray for the Holy Spirit to teach us. Thank you, dear Father. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I don't know if someone can, okay, there's someone. Thank you, Brother Desire, for projecting the reading this morning. Uh, just as the song was saying, this was our theme yesterday when we were discussing uh, the chapter we just read, uh, where it says, in our wake, I'm just going to read the last paragraph which we read. Uh, which says, in our work for God, there is danger of relying too largely upon what men with his talents and ability can do. Thus we lose sight of the one master worker. Too often, the worker for Christ fails to realize his personal responsibility. He is in danger of shifting his burden upon organizations instead of relying upon him who is the source of all strength. So we all have that responsibility to go out and reach someone for Christ, not to put it to organizations or to look to others, but it's our responsibility as well. It is a great mistake to trust in human wisdom or numbers in the work of God. Successful work for Christ depends not so much on numbers or talent as upon a pureness of purpose, the true simplicity of earnest, dependent faith. So we have to trust in God, to have faith in God for this work to be successful. We have to depend on Christ. We cannot look for talent or or anything like that. We have to have true simplicity of earnest dependent faith. Personal responsibilities must be born. Personal duties must be taken up. Personal efforts must be made for those who do not know Christ. In the place of shifting your responsibility upon someone whom you think more richly endowed than you are, Work according to your ability. Whatever you can do to reach someone. It could be prayer. It could be Bible study. It could be sharing words of kindness. Anything in the, in the with this work, um, we have to be guided by God, by his Holy Spirit to do whatever we are able to do according to our ability. So this, the points which were brought out were kind of similar, that we actually also benefit in doing the work of God. It's for our benefit, not for God's benefit. Because if we refuse, God can raise even stones. Stones will cry out. So... It's a privilege to be working in the vineyard of God. And also God um, intends to save us. So when we are doing God's work, we are benefiting in many ways because God is also speaking to us. We are in partnership with him. And for us to be carrying out this work, it's because God wants to save us. And we also have to remember that God can use anyone, even the uneducated. 
it's not only those who are who have attained masters or PhDs. Is if we look at the disciples, they were common men, but they did mighty works for God. Um, so the work will go forward of building up the kingdom of God. Even when we refuse, the work will not stop. God has got many ways of ensuring that his work goes, goes on. You know, the angels, they love to do this work. Um, but God wants us. It's a privilege for sure because we are the fallen people, the fallen human beings. But God wants to partnership with us for us to depend on him and do this work for him. Um, let me just check if there are anyone. Prayer retreat, do you want to go ahead and comment? Oh, that's me there. Let me change to. <laughs> I forgot to do this. But anyway, I'll do that uh, in a minute. Um, good morning, brethren. Thank you, Sister Judith, for that recap. Yes, a uh, thought came to my mind as you were uh, giving that uh, recap. Uh, you know, this uh, second paragraph that uh, you were reading from, uh, that first line says, in our work for God, there is danger of relying too largely upon what man with his talents and ability can do. Um, I mean that cannot be put anymore, that cannot be simplified further than how it is already. There is danger in relying upon what man with his talents and ability can do. The text that came to my mind, uh, is it, uh, remind me now, is it Hosea 4 verse 6? Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, I'm sure. And this truth is like God has been teaching. It's right there, it runs throughout the Bible. God wants us to know that in and through ourselves, we are nothing. In fact, there's a text actually that says that in Isaiah, I believe it's Isaiah 41, uh, I believe from verse 15, 17, somewhere there, where God says, all nations are before him as nothing. They are less than nothing. In fact, that's what the text says, that we are less. Than, this is speaking of nations, not even an individual. We are less than nothing before God. So, it is... I mean, there's no better words to say how much of a privilege it is. Uh, yes, that's Zechariah. Yeah, get mixed up with those two books. Zechariah, yes. Zechariah 4 verse 6. Yes, it, it, we, 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 we are in danger. You know, the devil wants us to think that we have something to offer. Everything that is in man is because of God's goodness. Um, I, w I, I used to struggle to understand uh, when the text say in Isaiah, the Isaiah that says um, the righteousness of men, uh, our own righteous, our righteousness is as filthy rags. What we think, the best that we can offer is filthy rags before God. The best, uh, I used an illustration before when I, um, I was doing a presentation. I, I, I believe the Lord gave me that illustration. When I said, um, you know, there are some toilets that are nicely cleaned up. You know, you go into the bathroom and the toilet looks really clean. I mean, the, looks at the, 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 uh, you, you look at the water, it's, I mean, it's sparkly clean. I said to somebody, I said, if you are thirsty, would you drink that water? I will never drink that water, even though it looks clean. It's coming from the toilet. It looks clean, 
but it's from the toilet. So I thought, I said, Lord, have mercy. And this is what our righteousness is like. We can't produce. The, 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 when Jesus is saying there's nothing good in man, our own righteousness is as filthy rags. So to rely on what the flesh or what man can do is an insult to God because there's nothing good that man can produce. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is God in us that brings value to man. It is Holy Spirit who works in man to bring value. So let me just end by saying, we have many stories in the Bible to suggest this. David and Goliath. Some will, will find a very funny story, think it's an entertaining story, but this is the same truth God is, is presenting to us, that he can use anybody, God can use anybody to accomplish his will. If the rest of those men, there were huge men in Israel, who were in the, in the army, saw himself was a huge man, he was the tallest. But because he was afraid, God could not use him. Now, can you imagine that that sheep, shepherd boy is the one that God used to take down the giant? And this is the story that runs through the Bible, the story of Joshua, the choir. God he wants to do the work, but he wants us to, to be involved. So, I think, uh, as it says there, I think uh, in the middle it was saying it is a great mistake to trust in human wisdom or numbers in the work of God. It is a great mistake. Uh, the story of Gideon. He says, you're too many. Ask anybody who wants to go home to go home. And God used less than 1% to do the work. So... It's powerful, the truths that are in God's word. I think God wants us to realize how big he is, how sovereign he is. And when we start to realize how powerful and how great our God is, all our fears, all our anxieties will vanish because we will realize that we can do all things through Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Desire. Sister K, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Sister Judith. And good morning, everyone on the platform. I just also wanted to just add on to those beautiful comments which uh, Sun Desire has brought out uh, of not depending on self. Sometimes, you know, um, I am talking from my own personal experience before before I started uh, wanting to be part of, you know, of, of God's army, to be enlisted under Emmanuel's army, I used to think, um, oh, I don't know about, uh, you know, if, if I'm asked about the doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventists, or I don't know how to explain uh, 2,300, I don't know how to explain 70 weeks prophecy. I don't know how to, you know, there, there were all sorts of excuses in my head of not wanting uh, to even go out to distribute books to say, mm, but I'm not sure myself. There was that um, drawback all the time, of, mm, but I don't know about this. What if somebody asked me this, then I'm not sure. That is the spirit of the enemy. God will equip, will equip us when we go out. He will give you the right words to, to speak to people. Even yourself will be, you actually get surprised. Where did that come from? I've, I've never said that, those, those words before. Because he's the one who, the spirit will speak through us when we trust in him. He, he's the, it's, it's his work. So, we we just make ourselves available and and see how God is going to use each one of us. Let's not be scared. When you hear anything, when you feel anything in your mind, you know, the feeling, I always say, 
uh, we are not saved by feelings. When you have that feeling, just to rebuke it, to say, this is not for, of God. You did not create me with a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind, and you go. Because that is the enemy who will be whispering to say, uh, you are not strong enough. What are you going to say to the people? You yourself are not, you are not even strong enough. Don't listen to those, to, to, to the devil whispering, you know, in your ear on anything to do with God. Go by faith and, and take hold of, you know, of his promises that he'll be with you. And you'll be amazed what God will do. You know, all of us will, will be amazed. Imagine if each one of us is doing this and this corner, this one is holding on that corner in that neighborhood. How how the word is going to spread. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Sister Kay, that is so true. Sister Allen, please go ahead. Thank you. Good morning. Sister Kezia, you know, you have given everyone here um the remedy to 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 go out and and don't feel um like they can't or because I feel like that um sometimes and the first time I went out um I was sweating my arms were sweating my hands were sweating I was doubting I was confused I was saying what if I can't say anything because I get tongue-tied and I get um I start confusing the words and 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 you know as you say Satan as a way of bringing things and putting it in your mind that you have not even think that you even remember your name, you know. And I remember this man saying to me about Second Timothy one verse seven: For God has not given you the power of of fear, but of power of love and the spirit of fear of, but the power of love and a sound mind. And I I I said it to myself. I said it to myself. And I went out one day and met, I met this atheist. And I was like, dear Lord, an atheist, these people can turn you around and make you think that you don't even know who, what you're talking about. And that's how I felt. But, you know, God came, the Holy Spirit brought things that I have read, things that I have spoken, and brought them back to my remembrance. And when I finished um, speaking to this gentleman, he took a book. And I was praising the Lord, praising the Lord. And, you know, it, fear can come over you, but it's true. We have to just sweep them away and let the Lord lead because it is his work and he knows what he's doing. He will equip us for for doing um, what he is sending us to do. So I... I I, I'm still fearful and I still don't go out all the time. And I wish I, I, I really wish I could like knocking doors and everything like that. I, 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 I'm just so fearful. I'd rather push the, the, the tracks through the doors and stuff like that, or speak to people that I know um, that are not Christians or, or do not know the word of God, but I can't, um, go out and give books I don't know but we all have to stand in our corner we all have to stand in our lot and as it and it uh, as it says that you know we must um work according to our own ability so yes thank you thank you sister Kezia thank you amen yes that's so powerful what you're saying it's so true God will bring those things into remembrance just a quick testimony I wanted to say one time as well. I couldn't even believe myself because the things that I witnessed that day, even talked about the Sunday law and <laughs> talked about the Sabbath, that the person was so like spellbound, just listening. And he wouldn't even leave because he just wanted to hear more and more. And yeah, I was so weak and I'm thinking I'm the weakest. But God used me that day. Yeah, God is amazing. Tackle twins, please go ahead. Um, I said, 
Uh, yes, good morning here. He qualifies the calls. You know, many of these worldly um, um, qualifications you don't need. You know, you don't need it in life and everything like that. You know, if, when, we, when we go out uh, giving out books, when they reject us, they're not rejecting us, they're rejecting God. You know, they don't realise what they're doing. And it, uh, you are surprised sometimes some people will take a book, you know, and they are surprised, you know. And um, it's uh, the Holy Spirit working. Yeah, when you get insulted, it's, you have to, it has to be like water off a duck's back. Um, you know, you don't take it personally. Just move on. Wipe the dust off your feet and move on to the next person. <laughs> So true, so so true. Thank you, Techly Twins. Um, is it Brother Alan? Sorry, sister. Um, good morning, everyone. Sorry, um, Alan. Sorry, it's, about... it's okay. Um, Alan is a Ugandan name for women and men, anyway. Hello, everyone. Um, sorry, I just wanted to share a point of um. When you pass by the benefit and you know, when you go on the street and I think that the thing that Jehovah Witnesses have done um, and we need to practice, put in practice is when we share God on the street as a group other than one person. If you are alone, you might have a spirit of fear uh, because you're going to face a lot of people who like you know God says you know you're gonna be among wolves and you you know everyone is very aggressive everyone is the bit but if you're in a group you're gonna be more stronger when you're together than when you're actually by yourself so I'm promoting if if you know people can gather in groups and if if someone wants to go out and just share the gospel um it's just the thought, um, something that Jehovah Witnesses, because I see Jehovah Witnesses all the time together in the morning, early morning, like seven o'clock. They're standing around trying to share the good news. Um, and God gives them commendation for that because they are always together. And even though sometimes, of course, they are maybe, you know, um, but I think if we pull it together, like um, going groups, to share the with the gospel, um, that's um, if I put it in practice, it that would be much more better because it says in um Ezekiel Ezekiel chapter four verse nine, it says better to have a partner than go alone, share the work, share the wealth, and if one falls down, the other helps, but if there's no one to help, um, then then tough. So clearly. When we are we, we are to actually prosper in the word of God and the sharing the gospel is better to have to be in, in more than two people at least of a group, then that's more effective in case the wolves are very aggressive, then we have support of each other. May God bless you. Thank you, Sister Allen. That's a good point as well. Thank you for that. Sister Charlene. Good morning, everybody. I um, must have a short testimony. Um, when I was in Mozambique, um, uh, there's, well, there was, we, we stayed in a holiday, um, me and other missionary, we stayed in a holiday resort, and uh, there was a lot of soft sand. And uh, we had, yeah, we had the, he had two cars. So I used one of the cars in time to do groceries or go places. Um, so I had to drive on soft sand. It was very, very soft. So you had to drive it a certain way to get through the soft sand. And for about 10 months, it went well, nothing. I could drive every day, almost every day through there, no problem. But then all, just one day, I started losing uh, grip on the road for some other reason. I didn't understand what's going on. How can I suddenly have been dri driving this road almost every day for 10 months and suddenly I can't drive on this road? I didn't start slipping all over the place and I didn't understand what was going on. And so... I started praying and I said, Lord, um, help me with this because I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm not losing grip on this road and I have to keep driving on this road. 
And then I started, every time I went out, I started repeating myself the whole time during the, the, the drive on that section of sand, Philippians 4 verse 13. And I was thinking to myself, okay, God, I'm God, I'm putting my trust in you now. The problem is going to be solved. But no, the last two months that I was there, every day, I had to repeat that verse to myself to give myself courage that I was not going to slip, that God was going to help me. Um, so God showed me a very valuable lesson that I cannot depend on myself and think, oh, I've been doing this so long. Um, I can keep doing this on this road. God showing me his, my total dependence upon him and showing me every time I went on that road, I had to trust him again. <laughs> so I thought that was amazing testimony to me and a lesson that I cannot just think, oh, things have been going well. They will keep going well every time I do something, every time. I had to go out, I had to put my trust in God again. And so I thought that was just for me, a very, very valuable lesson. Oh, powerful, Sister Shannon, another lesson again. God keeps bringing us back to, to us having total dependence on him because we might be doing this work and feel that, oh, I don't have any fear anymore, I'm confident to do this. But it's God's work. We have to continue to continue to be so dependent to trusting him and to see ourselves as very weak vessels who we'll always need Christ when we go out there. We we'll always need the Holy Spirit to go with us and to direct us to the people he wants us to reach. Uh, thank you, Sister Charlene. Powerful testimony. Sister Metron, please go ahead. Good morning. I was struggling to open my mic. Yes, thank you, Sister Judith. Thank you so much um, uh, for the, all the comments that are coming. Good morning, everyone. I just want to share two uh, testimonies. Um, before I read this paragraph uh, that we read all together yesterday, I was like, oh, I didn't know actually I was doing that. Uh, where it says personal responsibilities must be born, personal duties must be taken must be taken up this was way before i even had uh, come across this uh, statement actually that uh, i had um, you know sort of like you know prayed to ask the holy spirit to say i i want to give people books but um in, in every every situation that that can happen uh, let me take the opportunity on anything that comes my way I don't want just to leave people without without knowing that um um that there's there's God and they have to give their lives to to Jesus. So I have taken it uh you know upon myself that I always make sure that I travel in my car with great controversy books everywhere I go. I have to make sure that my there there the is a box with me in the in the in the in the in the car. So I make this business of ordering the great controversy books all the time so two you know occasions that i just want to share with you and the first uh, option uh, occasion was when my child um, was meant to be taught this uh, relationship sex education in the school and i stood against it and i just said no not my child uh, they wrote emails then they said come i'm i'm just paraphrasing everything so they wrote emails, come, and we, we're going to sit with you to discuss this issue. Uh, yes, I was called in the school. I went. I was the only parent who went there. And um, they were asking me. I said, no, it's a, it's a no. If you want that subject, if it's a serious subject, I need to, 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 to be given myself the lineup of the lessons that you want me to be teaching my child, but not anyone else along those lines. I said, until I see you, teaching about children not to hold guns and knives and and and, and uh, drugs then this one should not be should not, should not be put on the syllabus because i haven't seen and when i enrolled my child in your school you never told told me that you are going to teach him this subject and after all you didn't even tell me that you will not even teach my child not to hold a gun not to hold a knife there's no such a thing in there. So it was a big thing, but after everything and um, whatever, my child, thank God, they didn't, they didn't, you know, you know, you know, you know, push him into those in, into that subject until he left the school. So the day when he left the school, I took my great controversy books, I counted all the numbers of teachers in that school. 
I carried them, I thanked them. I said, I thank you so much for the education that you've given my child, the foundation of the primary and everything from the headmistress to every one of them, everyone, the caretaker and everybody, the book one, everyone got the book. They were so excited. They were so amazed. They got the books. Second occasion was uh, my friends at work. So they said, oh, we need to go and uh, just have a time together uh, to meet together. But uh, we always want to go and meet in the pub. But then they were discussing, they say, but Metron will not come. If we go in the pub, Metron is not coming. And then one said, no, let's just ask and find out if she's going to come. Then I said, we just want to have, you know, just a, a get together and then we're going to go in the pub. Are you going to come? And I said, if it's not a Friday, I will come. This is the emails. If it's not a Friday, I will come. And so they chose a day, which wasn't a Friday, in the pub. So we were 14. I'm the 14th, and they were 13. All are non Adventists. I said, wow, that's an opportunity, Lord. They've invited me to go to the pub. I'll carry my books. So I carried my books. I went with my great controversy books to them. So we ate, we sat down and talked, blah, blah, blah. When we finished, I said, I thank you so much for inviting me here in the pub. It's my first time to be in the pub, but I just want to give each and everyone a book. They all took the books. They were hugging me. They were saying, Metro, thank you so much for this book. And guess what? Just yesterday, one person of them that I gave the book, I sent to uh, them a clip about the pop who is now talking to sort of like agreeing that they are sitting on the wrong, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, information about the Sabbath. They know they they they, they change the Sabbath. There was there's a clip that is running around, you know, you know, uh, that is talking about that. In a pope is saying people need to read the Bible and get the truth for themselves. So I sent this clip to this person, and then this person returned to me and said, Ah, Metron, why is he saying this now? This is too late that he's telling us now the truth that we are supposed to be reading. I said, ah, uh -uh. I told you the book that I gave you, you know, that time, go and read such, such a page and such as a page and go and read. He said, oh, yes, Metron, you gave me that book. You gave me that book. I'm going to, to reread it again. Now the Pope is telling us it's too late why he's telling us that, you know, personal responsibility. Sometimes God can give us these opportunities on your own. You can do the work. Yes, he can send us in twos like he did, but sometimes these personal responsibilities, God can equip us. If we ask the Holy Spirit, me, I just said, Lord, I don't want any opportunity to pass if, without me telling somebody about you or giving a book. So that's how I am you know, sort of like being helped by the Holy Spirit. I'm kind of like an you know, opportunist, opportunity, opportunist, <laughs> sorry, the word is running away. You know, who we'll just takes an opportunity wherever it arises, and then I leave a book with somebody. Thank you so much. Powerful, powerful, Sister Metron. That's so true. That's how we need to be doing this. And I'm sure there are loads of people who are doing the same work you are doing on this group and ma many more places. So we thank God. We just continue to pray that God will empower all of us. Uh, Brother Desire, please go ahead. Amen, amen, amen uh, to those powerful testimonies. You know, God is amazing. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's doing his work. Um, he's using us in a, in, a, in a special way. Well, I, I, I know you probably wanted to, to, to move on, uh, but I thought I should share this uh, quick one, uh, quick testimony. I, I, I hope it's relevant to what we're talking about here because um, I think the les lesson of dependence, uh, depending on God, uh, I don't know how many times uh, God has been repeating this lesson to us, that uh, we need to depend wholly on God. And um, it's recently uh, God... <laughs> uh, the, the, the Lord helped me to understand in a different way. Um, it, it, it's a short testimony. So, um, I I had just started a lesson uh, with one of my students, and uh, those those of you who know 
I I spend much time on the road, driving around. So, uh, just before the lesson, I I decided to take off my coat. It was getting warm, so when I was taking off my coat, I took out my phone. It was in the pocket, and I put it on the roof of the of the car. I was just all you know. I'm just taking off the coat put my phone on the roof and then I'll put it in my pocket rather because I was um, uh, leaving, uh, I was putting the coat in the back of the, of the car. Now, I then jumped into the car and left the phone on the roof. I didn't realize. So we started the lesson. Usually my sessions are two hour sessions. Drove, 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 drove. I think it was probably towards the end of the lesson. It was like, probably was left with 20 minutes to go or something like that. And we pulled up. And a thought came to my mind. I was thinking, oh, I wanted to show my students something um, on my phone. And then I'm looking for my phone in my pockets. I can't find it. I look at the back, can't find it. I'm thinking, where's my phone? And the thought came to my mind, did I take it off the roof? So I said to my student, can you call my phone? Now I hear the phone ringing. Well, I was happy that the phone is ringing in some way. But I'm thinking, where is this phone? So I look around, but the phone is not there. Then I said, I need to get outside and check if it's not on the roof. Brethren, the phone was there sitting on the roof. Been driving, turning, going round the bends, going round the roundabouts. Um, we had gone on 50 mile zones. The phone was sitting there on the roof, on the edge. In fact, where I had left it, it had not moved on the edge of the roof. So this is not like a car with a roof rack or anything. I mean... Even with a roof rack, sometimes I dropped my iPad and it was, I mean, it was shattered. But this doesn't have anything and it's there on the roof. Even my student, he stood there, he came out, he stood there. He says, wow. He couldn't stop saying, wow. He says, this is a miracle from God. I was speechless. I took my phone. It never rained. It never fell off. It never moved from where I was. And I was just thinking, God, what are you teaching me with this? I was blown away the whole, the whole day. Then in the evening, as I was praying, just thanking God that, I mean, this is just, you know, you just bought a new phone. You know how expensive these phones are. And I'm thinking, Lord, you saved me a great deal. But I'm thinking, but Lord, what are you teaching me? And I said a phrase, but I didn't think about it until I said it. I said, keep me from falling. And then it hit me. I said, so Lord, you were teaching me by keeping that phone on the roof that you are able to keep me from falling. And I'm sharing this to say, we cannot depend even those things that we're doing, even to do the right thing. You have no power to keep yourself. And just this morning, and God was reminding me that he keeps the worlds. You know the worlds, the, 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 the universe hangs on nothing. I mean, I mean the, the, the planets, they hang on nothing, the galaxies. And we're told in Hebrews that by faith we understand that they are kept by the power of God. This earth is not crushing. Why? Because he keeps them from falling. And that small miracle that God did for my phone, he was just reminding me that he is able to keep me 
from falling. So, so when it comes to this lesson that we're learning in depending on God, let him who think he can stand, think twice. Even when we're doing the right thing, it's not because of how good we are. It is the power of God. So when we see other people struggling, don't feel like you have made it because it is God who is keeping you from falling. So we, we can never de de depend on, on flesh. God says, cursed be the man that put his arm, or his trust in flesh. Cursed be the man. So you might think that text is talking about you trusting in your mother or in your spouse or in, 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 in your husband. No, but you are the greatest hindrance to your own salvation. I am the greatest. I can trust in self to my own detriment. If I think I know what to do, I know how to do this, if I rely on my wisdom, this is what he's saying there. In our work for God, there is danger of relying too largely upon what men with his talents and ability can do. It's not because we know how to so, to speak. We can speak the language well. That's nothing to do with that. Even to 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 um to live a righteous life, it is His power that is keeping us from falling. So yeah, that's just that was um a testimony that uh, God gave me um a few days ago. Amen. Oh, amen. The desire that's amen. powerful. Powerful. I can't even add anything. I'll spoil the whole thing. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Um, we've got Tackley Twins. Please go ahead. Yes, I, I was smiling at, the, at Brother Desire's um, uh, testimony oh. about the phone. I've got a phone story. I have shared it before, but I'll just say uh, briefly again that um, it was um, uh, 2022, I think it was, and um, I was carrying a load of washing downstairs with a a black garment on top and I was carrying two drinking bottles and a glass as well. I thought, I'll just make one trip and I put my phone on top of the black garment. I put everything carefully on the side, on the kitchen, the side of the kitchen, and I put everything, and then I put the washing in. And then I realised, I think it was Brother J.B. had sent me a text and I thought, I'll, I'll check to see if I'm, uh, uh, you know, he's answered. No, I, I'd, I'd sent him a text and checked to see if he'd answered. And then I realised, horror, horrors. Where's my phone? <laughs> and and wash, I started the washing machine anyway. I stopped it. And he had done several turns. The water was coming in, you know, and I, I stopped the machine, but I couldn't open the door. Anyway, we went on, uh, we prayed. First of all, we prayed. We went on Google and um, tried to find how you can open a washing machine door when the water's in it. And it said, first of all, it said, get a credit card, slide it down between the, the lock, and it will open. That didn't work. Then it said later, um, Get a, get a, get the hose out, the emptying hose, and put it lower than the drum, and it, the water will come out. Well, it did. It came out in torrents, and um, we put a tray because it had to be low. And Linda picked the tray up and tipped it all over me in the process <laughs> of putting it in the sink. So I was wet. Um, this happened about quarter past eight in the morning. So we tried those two things. It, it still didn't open. We rang the the man who we'd bought the washing machine off, and um, he said, "I'll come." He, he said, I can't come until the afternoon. So it was quarter past eight and he came, quarter past five. Another prayer was answered because it was it was September and we didn't want him to come on Sabbath because if he had come on Sabbath, um, we wouldn't have had it, let him do it. But he came quarter past five and I think Sabbath was in about half seven or something like that. Anyway, he um, there was a catch at the bottom and he undid. But, 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 but I should have said, all the time I was sending it text on WhatsApp and I'm getting two ticks back. I wasn't expecting them to go blue, but I was getting two ticks back, so that meant it was, still, it was still working, even though it had been dunked in water. Anyway, so the man came at quarter past five and he released the door for me. And I went in, I got, and I, it was sat on top of the clothes, above the water line. So it had been in there nine hours. <laughs> Praise the Lord, and it still worked. But what, Linda was going to say something, wasn't you? Yeah, whenever... When we was made redundant, there was divine people presence in that, but we decided we're going to give everybody a great controversy in the place. And even the bosses and the directors and everybody, and they all took one. So, um, 
You take every opportunity. You take every opportunity you can to give these books out and witness. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for this powerful testimonies. <clears throat> it's good to testify because these testimonies, they really encourage us and showing us how we really need to depend on God, so total dependence, even when we think we are so experienced in the work, in the, you know, in doing the work of God, we can never depend on ourselves. We can never trust ourselves because we always need God. We always need to abide in him so that we can actually do so much. You know, they say, if I was reading a book which was saying, we can do, you know, we can even this witnessing. If the Holy Spirit is not leading, if we are not filled with the Holy Spirit, we might, yes, um, do some reach out people, but it won't be so effective. Or we can go even out as a church and say we are witnessing. But if the Holy Spirit is not in us, it's just, yes, our works and we might reach a few people, but if one person who is really filled with the Holy Spirit, who's allowing the Spirit to use him, one person can even reach millions, reach many people, so many people, because God is still doing wonders, doing miracles in the lives of people. I don't know if there's anyone who's got one last comment. Sister Arlene, please go ahead. Yes, um, I remember once um, we were down the West End and, um, you know, it was pouring with rain. So we were always standing by the doorway and, you know, people were passing, but we were just standing by the doorway. And I hadn't given any books because I went with a group of people and I haven't given any books. And I'm like, I stood at the doorway and I said, Lord, I don't know how to give books, but please, please send someone to me. Please, Lord. And I stood there with my eyes tight shut. And I'm saying, please, Lord, please send someone to me. And this lady walked up to me and um, she said, um, can I have one of your books? And I gave it to her and she walked. She looked at it and she walked up. And I was like, Lord, you're so good. <laughs> I couldn't believe how quick that was. You know, sometimes when we think that the Lord is not working, he says, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Trust in me with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding because we don't know in all our ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct our path. And that's exactly what he does each and every time. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, everyone who's contributed. And thank you for those powerful testimonies. With that, we come to the close of our session. I'm sure we have learned so much in this session. Um, just going to ask Sister Charlene, can you close for us in prayer, please? Sure, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful time that we could spend. We didn't spend much time reading, Lord, but these wonderful testimonies, Lord, have really touched, I'm sure, every heart here, Lord, seeing of your greatness and your goodness, and you know or oh, where things that we struggle with, things that we may be afraid of, things that we find difficult. Some people might find difficult to trust you, Lord. You know all the things that we're struggling with. You know us personally, Lord. You know every hair in our heads. So you know what we need, Lord. The, 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 the places where we need to develop and, and change and help us, Lord, in all these things, Father. Give us the strength and the courage to go out there, Lord, and to spread the gospel because that is the commission in Matthew telling us, I think it's Matthew 8, telling us to go out, Lord. Guide us all on this platform, Lord, and everyone that that's wants to do your will. Show us, Lord. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord, and give us this divine opportunity that we can uh, share these things and give us more miracles, Lord, not for ourselves, for, for, for us to strengthen us, but we can... Um, help strengthen other people, Lord, and 
we just want to thank you today for just amazing goodness, Lord, the little and the big things you do in our lives, just saving phones, just those little things and showing us a total dependence upon you, Lord. Help us never, ever to think that we can do anything ourselves, Lord. Give us these little lessons, Lord. Keep us close to you because if we are totally dependent upon you, we can do so much more, Lord, and we can put our trust in you and you will show us big and mighty things, Lord. And the work will just increase and um, spread, and the word will spread if we are dependent upon you and we don't choose our own path or our own wisdom because we have no wisdom, Lord. All wisdom comes from you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, be with us during this day that we will not lose track of you during this day, that we will always keep our minds set, set on you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank amen. you. Thank you, Sister Shalin, for the prayer. Uh, I now hand over to Brother Desai. Thank you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you for uh, the, uh, well, we didn't get to do the reading, but it was powerful still uh, reflecting on what we've already read. And there's uh, so much meat in those paragraphs there. Uh, there's a lot to digest even when we leave. May God bless you, Reverend. Thank you, Sister Judith, for facilitating the reading. And um, there will be midday press, as always, from 12 to 1. Uh, please tune in if uh, you are available. And uh, remember to subscribe. Visit uh, the YouTube channel um, if you haven't already. And share the links with people on these uh, things that we're discussing. Somebody will be blessed. Uh, and in the evening, we have uh, Brother Michael. He's, uh, uh, he's got one more he's sharing this evening, and then his last message will be tomorrow. Those who have been joining, I'm sure you can testify that uh, it's been a blessing. Please remember to share the link again with others that they too may, may be blessed. Have a wonderful day, brethren. I pray you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless.